we have you know by far the best sales team uh, in the industry. So having a, having a we're very flexible in the guidelines. Our pricing is very aggressive. Quick pricer, then concierge, conditions, upload conditions, CTC. You know, the way that we look at bank statements and the other lender looks at bank statements can be completely different. So that was really the first kind of program that rolled out, finding a way to help self-employed borrowers be able to qualify for loans. One of my brokers calls me Nikita, makes it happen. It's like Nikita, Nikita it CTC. Hello and welcome to another insightful episode of ANG Digest, where we bring you the latest trends and insights in the world of mortgage lending. I'm your host, Nikita Perindap. Today we have a special guest, Mike Peterson, who will share insights about the Bank Statement Mortgage Program and its suitability. Mr. Mike Pearson, thank you so much for joining us again on um, another enlightening episode of ANG Digest. Here we are, exciting to be here. Like the new haircut. Wonderful, you look amazing as usual. I know, so I'm glad you joined the uh, Stripe right, shirt right. gang. It's good that we coordinated, so. Beautiful. Good stuff. Without even talking to each on the weekend, but here we are. It's okay. <laughs> How's everything? How are you doing? Everything is fantastic. It's been a very busy time at a and uh, We were just at a trade show in Miami, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, we're starting the travels. We're all over the U.S. How did the trade show go? Uh, they've all been fantastic. Uh, we just uh, we just did a show in Miami a couple weeks ago. Tremendous turnout. Mm -hmm. uh, very excited to, to see people kind of re-engaged in the new year. Uh, great show in Atlanta. Same kind of same kind of thing. Uh, lots of uh, growth momentum so hopefully that's good luck to a fantastic uh, 2024 right that's a wonderful start I think in the year um, any upcoming events yes <laughs> we'll be all over so you'll yeah. see a and D, I think at 30 shows this year. So, wow, all right. And that's just yeah. the trade shows. Then we're doing lots of networking events, partner events. Um, so mm. we'll be all over the place uh, between our great marketing team, our you know our salespeople on the ground, and, and then I go to a lot of those things too. So all right. uh, keeping busy for sure. Wonderful, sounds yeah. like a pretty, pretty booked um, mm -hmm. year. Yep. Any idea what's the topic for tonight? I heard a rumor Mm -hmm. That we're doing a, an oldie but a goodie, the old bank statement loan program. Absolutely good. Good, Absolutely good. yeah. I, I, I like that. It's always something that we get asked a lot about. Yep. Um, so it's always good to uh, to kind of unpack that a little bit. And uh, you know, I know we have a lot of great things coming up. I think we have a a, a webinar coming up on February fifteenth right, correct, correct. at uh, at one p.m. Eastern time. So. I'm sure we'll post the information for people to register. We're going to that. mention that a little bit later on the digest too, for Perfect. sure, like more with more details. Excellent. All right, so let's shed light on the bank statements. Okay. Again, but since that's the, one of the most popular programs, mm -hmm. we need to uh, make it even more clear for the brokers okay. to make the process even more smooth. To begin with, could you please? Tell us what is it for? How long do you think the mortgage that mortgage program actually been on the market? And just the general information on the bank statement program. Yeah, so bank statements is really the genesis or the beginning of non-QM lending. That was really kind of the first, you know, widely adopted program that came out in kind of the uh, non-agency, non-QM space. Mm -hmm. um, so this goes back you know, maybe 15 years or so now to to the very start. Um, so that was really the first kind of program that rolled out, finding a way to help self-employed borrowers, um, you know, be able to qualify for loans when there may be, uh, you know, taxable income may not line up with what their actual income that is coming in. So that's kind of really where it started um, and it has been the, you know, number one program in non-QM since its inception. What makes us special when it comes to offering the bank statement program? Yeah, I mean, I think we're very flexible in the guidelines. Our pricing is very aggressive. Um, what I like best, you know, when I talk to clients and when I talk to um, you know people who have closed loans with us, they really like the concierge mm -hmm. desk that we do mm -hmm. up front. Um, I've seen some different combinations with different lenders, whether it's the uh, you know the uh, salesperson reviewing the bank statements and trying to come up with the income, or maybe using a, you know a straight automated system that might be able to read the bank statements and come up with the income. You know, both of those kind of fall short. Uh, you know, we spend uh, you know a tremendous amount of time working with our underwriting team, and we have underwriters mm -hmm. that work mm -hmm. on the scenario desk, so that you can be confident in the numbers that come out of that. Um, they'll take a look at insufficient funds, they'll take a look at large deposits, anything that needs to come out of there, and then they have a conversation with how those things are determined so that you can take the findings from our concierge desk 
and you can use that through underwriting. I think it really sets us apart. So basically what sets us apart is, like in, in two words, broker can just upload the bank statements into mm -hmm. the file without the submitting, without the disclosing the file, mm -hmm. get the calculation before disclosing the file and understand will it work with the lender or mm -hmm. not, right? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously we want the file, right? Yeah. So yeah, so yeah, we yeah, want, yeah. Uh, yes, you know, some is, commitment. Yeah. We're not outsourcing this service for everyone else, right? Yeah. So we do want the, the file to be uploaded and started. Uh, and then submit those uh, those bank statements over for us to review. Um, but it is done, you know, generally before the approval or before mm -hmm. you know uh, any of the credit underwriting is done. So it makes it a nice way up front to kind of sell with confidence, knowing what kind of income that you can mm -hmm. use to qualify. And it's amazing. Sometimes we get numbers that are are much higher than even the client expected. Right. Right. Uh, that happened recently. I think it was one of your files, yeah, it actually. Was, yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. So um, you know, sometimes even based on the knowledge that we think we have, you know, the underwriters can review it and say, no, there's much more there than you think um, that we can use to qualify. So. Beautiful, beautiful. How can changes in legislation might affect the future of bank statement based um, mm -hmm. on the mortgage program? Yeah, so this uh, it's a bit of a loaded question, um, mm -hmm. but, but definitely when either new administrations or administrations change taxing policies, that can affect borrowers' uh, tax returns or business mm -hmm. structures. Um, you know, we see that sometimes when there's either, you know, like I said, changes to tax strategies or, um, you know, what's required for businesses to set up. A lot of times that makes tax return income not very viable. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I always kind of take a step back when I talk to people about bank statement loans. These, you know, the, these, aren't, these aren't loans for borrowers who can't qualify otherwise, right? They're, they're for borrowers who probably could qualify using full doc, but this allows them to uh, qualify with more income because we're not taking out all of the paper deductions out of the mm -hmm. borrower, right? So we're using the actual cash flow of the business uh, to help them qualify. So, um, you know, when there are changes and, and, you know, what things that can be written off on taxes, then a lot of times people will look to bank statements if they're self-employed um, to be able to use that to qualify, either qualify or qualify for more home than they could otherwise. In your experience, mm -hmm. what types of clients or scenarios are particularly well suited for the bank statements uh, mm -hmm. programs in the U.S. market? I mean, we see all kinds. So if you're talking about industries, uh, we see it aqua across the spectrum. Uh, first and foremost, as we kind of alluded to, you have to be self-employed, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm a W-2 employee. I'm not qualifying for mm -hmm. bank statement loan. So that's that's kind of a given, or hopefully that's a given. Um, so that's number one. You know, businesses that have lots of deductions, you know, whether that's uh, depreciation or equipment or, you know, other things that can kind of be written off from a tax perspective, but aren't actual income mm -hmm. reducing factors. Um, those are borrowers that would uh, would do well for a bank statement loan program. Now we're we're very flexible. Uh, we'll allow personal or business bank statements. Um, we can do the 12 or the 24 months. So you know, I always uh, encourage people to have a conversation with your salesperson, see what's the best setup for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, taking the time to educate yourself not just on our programs, but what's going to be the best program for that particular borrower is is very important. Have you ever considered? Um being self-employed, maybe like opening your nail salon or barbershop, for example? I have a little bit of a dream <laughs> of right. opening up an aquaponics hops farm. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That might be down the road, but we'll see someday. So grow some, uh, I have some trout and those will feed the, uh, the farm that will grow hops that I can sell to uh, breweries to make beer. Once it's done, uh, send us your bank statement so we can get some send them to Sounds the concierge like service. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get, okay. well, that will work. I will yeah. probably need a loan at that point, so that, that will work. Any advice to the mortgage brokers or agents when working with your bank statement program? Yeah, first and foremost, take a look at the guidelines. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important. I, I say this a lot. We've had uh, you know, many conversations and talks with both clients and then speaking engagements and that kind of thing. You know, the way that we look at bank statements and the other lender looks at bank statements can be completely different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's where non-QM lending is unique, right? So we can, uh, because we do our own paper, we do our own servicing, we write our own guidelines. The way that we look at things can be different than what you see. It's not like a conventional loan where if you have an approved eligible, everyone is fine. It's yeah. not that way. So you have to look at what we do, how we use deductions, what can be excluded, what can be included. Um, and so that's the guidelines piece. As we mentioned before, have a conversation with your salesperson. We have, you know, by far the best sales team uh, in the industry. So having a con <laughs> con <laughs> you know, host excluded. Uh, <laughs> But we have a great sales team, so you can definitely fire away questions. We have a scenario desk, all those kind of things. 
And you know, people love our quick pricer too, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to pricing, yeah. being able to go to admortgage.com, scroll down, uh, and do your quick pricer on the spot, get accurate pricing with about four, I don't know, like maybe less than 10 fields uh, to get your accurate pricing is great to be able to, you know, start talking to the client about what the rates and payments might be. Right. Quick pricer, then concierge, conditions, upload conditions, CTC. Or just call Nikita and it'll oh, all be yeah, handled. Like Nikita, make, like one of my brokerage calls me, Nikita makes it happen. Nikita like Nikita, Nikita is CTC. <laughs> all right, I like it. So. I like it. It, it's working. Uh, Michael, that's all the questions I have for now. Um, would you like to mention um, any events that are going to be very soon? That we sure, open? yeah. I mean, in, in conjunction, uh, you know, we're talking about bank statements. We have, a, you know, uh, I think it's a four-part blog coming out on bank mm -hmm. statement loans. So definitely check out admortgage.com for that. Lots of information, more than we can cover in this, in this segment. Um, and then, like I said, February 15th, we have a great uh, presentation that's gonna go through the nuts and bolts guidelines, you know, all these things on bank statement loans. And Mikhail is, is hosting that one uh, February 15th, mm -hmm. 1 p.m. I believe that's 1 p.m. Eastern time, but you can go to admortgage.com. They've got all the information and where to register there. Sounds good. Hope you're gonna sign up and um, take a look. Basically. All right, excellent. Michael, thank you so much for uh, your time again. I appreciate it. As always, it. it's a pleasure, very knowledgeable uh, discussion, I believe. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully our <laughs> viewer is gonna find it too. <laughs> I appreciate so it, this has been a great thank time. You. Uh, you know, love coming here and uh, we'll do it again soon. See you soon. And there you have it, another enlightening episode of ANT Digest. Our heartfelt thanks to Mike Pearson for joining us today to explore the fascinating world of mortgage programs, particularly the bank statement program. If you found the episode informative, don't forget to subscribe, share, and leave us your feedback. Stay tuned for more engaging discussions on mortgages right here on ANT Digest. This is Nikita Verindup signing off.